guys doing? This is Randy Richard in the shop. So we're moving along on our phases here of the many projects just to get to repair this gear. So we've got the dividing head ready to go. We repaired the uh, taper attachment locks and that uh, is ready to go. So we're ready to make the uh, uh, mandrel for to hold the gear. So this is a this is just a small mandrel, uh, one I got from Peter Owens. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do, what I've decided to do, I should say, is I'm gonna use this taper uh, uh, as my setup guide because this one's nice and smooth, and this one's tapered at 5.1 inches per uh, 5.1 thousandths uh, I should say per foot. So, you know, in the machinery handbook, it will tell you that, you know, uh, a standard one or, you know, it's close to that. It's close to 6,000 per foot. So this one's close. This one's 5.1 thousandths per foot, which will work just fine. Uh, I've, I've made a drawing. And so we use this one. We're going to set up the taper attachments using this one as a guide. Uh, something I just, I did not uh, measure, I did not uh, film, but this is the, uh, this is my blank I'm gonna use. Now, this is a W1 drill rod, one inch diameter. I've already faced the ends and center drilled the ends. For, this is a blank for the mandrel. This is what we're gonna turn down. So I've already uh, machined it to length, seven inches, and I've already uh, center drilled it. I, I put this, I did this on the uh, Logan lathe. Uh, it was just, uh, I didn't have to do a chuck change and all that, because I put it in there and I aligned it up to be, for a run out, to be less than a thousand run out, and then I did the ends. So the ends are, are, you know, really quite accurate. But now we're going to turn it between centers. So the concentricity of the ends will then be, uh, will uh, back up here, I should say. You know, when you put it between centers, when the turning here, this entire length will be concentric with the ends. So you can take it out and you can put it back in again. And it still will be right, uh, you know, concentric. We're, 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 so, because we're going to take it out, after we make it, we're going to use it and we're going to put it in the mill and put it between centers. And that gear will still be concentric on there. So, that's the whole idea. Uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, we're ready to go. So, uh, we'll uh, go on over to the lathe and uh, do some machine in here, get this mandrel made. So we're over here on the lance lathe. Uh, I'm ready. What I need to do here is this is a chunk of one inch stainless I use to make a uh, center out of uh, when I'm doing using the a center for the in the chuck. So you got to take a cut on it each time to make it concentric. So I got it set up here 30 degrees to get a 60 degree point on it, and uh, we're going to be turning on the back side. So we got to run it in reverse, and uh, we'll take a little cut. All you gotta do is take enough off to true it up. I don't need to go back very far, so I just, I have this little shoulder in there that I just go back to for now. That way when I'm done with it, I can just, I'll just start over again. Oops. Yeah, you know, I said I had to start over again. This used to be quite a bit longer. Um, I've had this for... I made this thing on a ship one time. Probably... Almost 30 years ago. So, I, it used to be a couple... 
maybe twice as long as it is now. So it's still three and a half inches long. But it, I think it probably started with about six inch piece or something like that. So these things can last a long time. You don't, it's, you know, I just barely took any off, just enough to make it concentric. Alrighty, uh, I've uh, over here at the lance lathe with a taper attachment. We've got it uh, mounted in place over here in the back, locked in down there on those uh, the the locks that it, we you saw me fix. Um, so they're locked onto the uh, that dovetail that runs the length of the bed. Now, I'm not going to move anything because I've already got it set. I put in a piece of stock and did some test cuts uh, to get the taper. The, the angle is, you know, is 90.0229 you know, degrees. So, you know, it's less than one degree uh, of uh, taper. It's, it's um, very little. We're talking six thousandths over 12 inches. So... Uh, you know, you're only talking in, you know, uh, two thousandths um, over three inches. You know, so the taper is not very much. So anyway, this this there's two locks. There's one here and one on the other end. Um, these Allen heads, and this part swivels the the dovetail part here. This is the follower. This block here is the follower block. And then it is a it's locked by this ring here, which is loose right now, but it's locked to the cross slide. The cross slide screws that engage the cross slide to the um uh to the um <laughs> oh boy to the you know <laughs> I, I keep wanting to say lead screw, but it's you know it's not a lead screw. Anyway, you know the 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 threaded rod that's in, on the end of the crank here for the cross slide, the cross slide screw. <laughs> anyway, uh, the nuts are disengaged from the cross slide itself, so that does nothing now. But this is free; the cross slide is free to slide back and forth, right? So when you lock it here, when I if when you lock it in, as the carriage and the you know carriage moves, whatever this angle is set at is the angle that's going to cut in your taper. Because the the uh, cross light is free to move and, and it's going to follow the taper or the angle that this is set at. Uh, Hopefully you understand that. So if you have it set, you know, this way, you know, towards you this way on this end, because it's pivots, it's going to, as this moves along, it's going to pull the cross slide in. So it's going to be smaller on this end. You're going to start big and go to small. So if you turn it the other way, it's going to, as it comes down this direction, it's going to push the cross slide toward the operator. And so it's going to end up being bigger at this end and smaller at that end. Now you adjust your depth of cut with the compound. You can uh, so so you want to make sure your compound has enough travel. You know when you start this, how much you're going to cut off. Um, well, it's not that big a deal. You can always adjust it. So you're going to slide your you'll slide your uh, get to where you want to be, and you'll slide your compound. You know, this will be loose, and you'll slide your compound over till you're, you know, touching your work or almost touching your work, and then you'll lock this in. So then, when as the as this travels, the carriage travels, it's going to cut that taper as it moves along, wherever you have it set at. So what I did, it took me um, actually, it only took me. Um, one, I did, I set it uh, close, uh, one, 
two, three adjustments. Uh, initial setting and two adjustments actually to get it to be cut right. So it, it you know it's pretty easy to get till I had the right cut. And so how I did it, you know, I just measured it. Now this is not like a precision, has to be a precision um, taper. It, it, you know, approximately uh, six thousandths per foot. And that's a half a thousandth an inch in taper. So right now, so this is, this here to that little mark there is three inches and down to here is six, but So if, uh, you know you measure it so you measure it as near to the end as possible. Well, here I'll measure the big end first. You know so yeah this is tapered so it, it should pick up the biggest part. Don't crank it down like a C clamp. So we're at 131.7. Then we'll come down here and measure near this to the end as you can. One two ninety nine. So I'm gonna do that again. So I got something a little different before. Yeah, one two ninety seven. One two ninety eight. One thirty one four. So you know we're like one point four, one point five thousandths in three inches. One point five times four. Well, the calculator didn't work. One point five times four is six thousandths per twelve inches. So if it's one point five, one point four, it's close enough. You know. So we're right, right in the ballpark, close enough uh, for what we're going to do. We're just making a mandrel. And, uh, Anyway, so like I said, so we're set up to uh, cut the taper. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it real quick. I'll do a little. Uh, I'm gonna do a little uh, skim uh, cut on here. I have to tighten this back up. I had it loose, so tighten that back up, and you'll see it just it it cuts just uh, like it laid to should cut.
much better finish. Reset to zero. Wow, I must have tapped it too much. Yeah, 4.7. Ugh. So I put the workpiece for the uh, arbor in here, and I took a cut on it. Actually, I took two really light cuts. Uh, so we're gonna give it a measure. See where we're at. See what that is, that's zero. I'm doing using incremental mode. So I'm at 3.4 thousandths. I'm shooting, I was shooting for three thousandths, but 3.4. That's over uh, six inches there. So that's rough, roughly six inches. So it's a, it's a little bit bigger, but trying to get rid of that four tenths would be, uh, it's a little bit of, I mean, that's hardly any adjustment in the taper attachment. So, uh, if as we cut it, if we maintain that, I'm just happy with that. So we're gonna continue. I'm gonna, you know, turn off the camera, but I'm gonna continue just cutting this on down until uh, we get down there close to our dimensions, which is uh, just under uh, 0 0.8. So uh, then, uh, and then we'll machine the end. Up. We'll get the taper all the way done. And then we'll just come in and machine this end. Then I'll move the dog down to this end, uh, you know, turn it around, machine the other end. And then we'll cut a couple flats in it uh, for the dogs. So that's where we're at. And uh, we'll just continue on cutting it. Okay, we're, we're getting down here to the the last uh, cut finish is basically perfect. The W1 machine's really nice. Uh, it, it, it's really nice machining uh, a drill rod and uh, it's heat treatable so uh, by just quenching in water. Uh, it's actually really neat stuff. Anyway so uh, this is, I'm, I'm hoping this, this, this might be the last cut, we'll see. I might have to do a real light pass. We're maintaining the, about 3.2 thousandths on our six inches, which is right there, so really nice. It's only about 12 thousandths depth of cut or so. That's it, you know, I had an angle here, so somewhere around that. Oh, ni nice finish. So I'm a 7865. 
I shoot for 7875, so 1,000 small right there. Seven ninety one. I'm a thousand small there, <laughs> which is still okay. It just moves the gear from here. It moves it over a little tiny bit, about an inch in. I was looking for about seven eighty eight. So that's seven eighty seven. So seven seven eight six seven. That's close enough. Um, so anyway, where the gear should sit is 7904. I'm going to set this at 7904. Lock it. So 7904. Let's see where that. So that gear should slip over until it should get tight at 7904. So it's going to be tight about there, about an inch and a quarter from the end should get tight right in there and yeah right in there about an inch inch and a quarter or so from the end which is okay too that'll be okay so i took it out here's the gear this is the first time now it's going on there we go now that's about two inches it's that's pretty good that's where we want it to sit that's nice. I'll give us plenty of clearance um, from the dividing head and such. So that's going to work fine. All right, so uh, I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to machine this end and then take this off, put it over here, turn it around, and machine the other end. So what I'm doing is I disconnected the uh, taper attachment by pulling this, I don't know if you can see here, uh, pulled the pin out that attaches here through this, this, this bushing, the adjustable bushing, right? Uh, and so that's a disconnected from the taper. And we're going to leave it set at that in case we want to do something else, right? But anyway, what I'm doing here is reconnecting the, the lead screw of the compound back to the cross slide itself, right? Um, not the compound, but the cross slide lead screw. Um, so these two screws here I put in, they capture the two nuts. So I just kind of, not too tight, but just a little bit, just barely snuggy. Those are kind of a slot, slotted holes. This screw has like a tit on it. And, uh, it goes down and pushes the screws apart to take up the backlash. Because if you look right now, let's see here, what do we have? We'll, we'll check it. And come back here to zero. 20. Uh, about almost 90 uh, thousandths of uh, backlash, right? And you can see that, well, you probably can't real well, but you can see the screws are moving back and forth a bit. So what you do is you t take that down, jiggling this back and forth. And usually I can get it to be around 10 or a little less than 10. And it, that's not too tight because it does make it a little tighter. A li li little bit of tightness is okay. It just creates more wear, but you don't want it to slip either when you're cutting. That's probably five or six, somewhere like that. That's too much.
Yeah, maybe maybe ten or so. Somewhere around there, maybe a little less. Then you gotta tighten these up, but now this is gonna change it a little bit. Yeah, that It tightens it up usually when you tighten those. That's probably about five. Not too bad. So we'll leave it there. Everything feels solid. So. Anyway, that's how you hook that, hook it, reconnect this one and adjust it. Underneath here, um, underneath the dial, you're like, these pull back, and there's a couple jam nuts here too. And you can adjust the, a little bit, you can adjust that end play out also, which is kind of nice. Both, both of these dials have that feature. All right, I'm going to machine this down a half an inch or one inch down and uh, down to three quarters of an inch in diameter. Oh no, yeah, so it's like three quarters of an inch. Yeah, three quarters of an inch in diameter. Okay, so I got the uh, mandrel done. Um, probably in the clip right before this. I um, uh, so I was working last night till like. Eight o'clock. Trying to get my mandrels done. So this is the mandrel you'll you'll you've seen in the clip uh, or in the little video before this here uh, part uh, making. This is a piece of W1 drill rod I was making. Anyway, so I think uh, well, so I mentioned in the clip there that I was a little under, and I thought it was going to still be within tolerance to make to work. Well. Put that gear on there. It got tight, you know, right about in here. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, boy, I, I should give that maybe just a touch of polish and just a t hardly anything. Because the finish was just perfect. Well, I should have not touched it. But I did. And now this is tight right there. But if I tap it on some solid, that gear will go right over this. It's not enough to... It, it, it probably uh, it might be tight enough to just to cut two teeth but um, well, I'm not real happy with it so I mean it it you know it's okay but, but I just not as happy with it as I could have been so well I'm gonna make another one right because I, I had some stock another piece of drill drill rod fortunately it's not a piece of total scrap but uh, neither is this. I mean, I could always make some stuff out of this. So I decided, so because I, I had the taper all still set up in the in the lathe and everything ready to go. So I whacked off another piece, cleaned up the ends, uh, and drilled them on the uh, Logan lathe. Threw that in there. And I go, well, I'm just going to rough cut that down. You know, because I was all set up to machine these ends square because I had just just disconnected the taper attachment. I left it left the taper attachment angle okay. So I turn it down and I don't know what if I misread the, the dial. I was tired. I misread the mic. I'm not sure. But I ended up under on this. Undersized. By uh I'm not I don't remember. I'm just gonna measure it here. But I ended up too small on this 784 yeah the minimum size could have been 788 uh, absolute minimum and I was seven I'm at 784 so that was a piece of scrap well it's not I mean that's still usable stock but a piece of scrap <laughs> so the, the I was setting up the taper attachment when I was setting it up I was using a different piece I used a piece of old 1018 type material to you know doing the 
Well, I'll show you a clip of that. Uh, I mean, you saw the clip uh, before this part uh, of me setting up the taper attachment, getting the angle right, doing some cut, test cuts and stuff. Well, I decided I'm just going to use that since I'm not going to waste another piece of drill rod if I screw it up because <laughs> my history wasn't doing too good. So uh, I used that material uh, and I made another one. Uh, whacked off a chunk of that and da da da. I didn't fail. I was too irritated. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the, the finish wasn't as perfect because of the type of material it is. You know, I don't know if anybody's used 1018. 1018 is, well, I think it's 1018. It's a very old piece of old stock that I found it by an old gold mine one time. So it, it's a it's a low grade steel, really old. So you know it's really old, uh, old low grade. Uh, so uh, you know the finish wasn't perfect, but I made sure it was big enough. And then I did do a little polish on it uh, to clean it up a little bit. You can still see some lines uh, in there, but it, you can eh, really hardly feel them. But anyway, uh, and then I. Uh, milled uh, a couple flats, uh, 180 degrees out on each end. Uh, this is just turned down to three quarters of an inch. So now we have a mandrel. It's going to fit right in there, and the, that's pretty much basically right in the middle. Uh, so we'll we'll tap it down uh, on something so that it goes slides. It'll come down a little bit farther, but no, but it's going to fit nice and tight. Um, roughly here in the middle. Let's see. I mean, this you gotta remember it is tapered, but it's still you're measuring it out. So I'm right there at 789, right there in the middle. 790 should be uh, really nice and snug on that thing. And then 789, yeah. But 7899 right there. So you know, right there it's a 790 area. So that that's going to be nice and snug in there and uh, I think it's about I don't know, down in here it's what's that 791 yeah so yeah about 791 so it'll be it should be plenty tight uh, to you know lock that on there so that's the mandrel, so we're ready to go. We'll put a dog on it. Um, we'll get it set up between the dividing head and the center. Uh, we'll have we'll braise this up next. And uh, it'll be, uh, we'll, we'll get her done, as uh, Mr. Fenner says. We'll get her done. So what I'm going to, just a quick explanation, I'm going to take a burr and I'm going to, do a little grain in there, remove those teeth, and burr that out a little bit, and then uh, build it up between these two teeth. And then I'm going to come in and we're going to single point, uh, single point cut those uh, there. I'm going to grind a high speed tool bit on a one inch boring bar and on the dividing on the boring head, and come in there and cut those route uh, like I did on that other gear uh, in that other gear video when I made the other, the one the whole gear. And we'll single point cut those. All right, there's my screw ups. Um, fortunately, this does not happen very often, and you don't want it to happen too often. It costs you. I mean, yeah, you know, materials not not cheap. Fortunately, I can use this. This is still great stock. It's just a little smaller. I started with a one inch stock, so. So uh, yeah, so uh, we just we just use this arbor. All right, you guys. Thanks a lot. I took uh, I put I put the mandrel in. This is a basically, this is six inches uh, to within about an eighth of an inch of the dog. So uh, you can see here that that six inch rule is just right up to the dog. I took, 
I didn't change anything and uh, I took one cut just a one cut one pass uh, light cut and six inches it ought to be around four thousandths there that's it zero right I'm in incremental mode so I have it zero let's see what this is that says four thousandths how sweet is that so that's it exactly six thousandths per foot so uh, we did a good job on setting the taper and uh, should have come out nice.